take a look at the remaining, remaining eight teams, Dortmund very much, I think, would be at the bottom of those power rankings. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I, I'm, sorry, I'm still a little shocked that you mentioned sort of Newcastle as the impressive te other team in their group, along with Paris Saint-Germain. And, and not me. Well, I'm just saying, Gab, when the draw... League, I don't example, know why you have to go anti-English on us. I'm I was just saying, when the draw was made <laughs> and we looked at it, you, you wouldn't have had Borussia Dortmund finished off of the group. Well, I do, exactly believe, I do believe Milan were in that group as well. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have had Newcastle either, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, look, uh, you know, it's ama it, it really is amazing coming on the back of the weekend, coming back of, of reports of, of, of some of the senior players, um, you know, turning on, on Edin Terzic, losing, lo losing faith in him. I think that might have impacted some of his team uh, selection as well, um, that they're able to come together, weather the storm, you know, not always pretty. Yeah, um, they, 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 they kind of keep going and... You know, it's, it's it's whether it's a dead cat bounce or not. Uh, I don't know, but um, I think nobody's going to admit it. But obviously, this is the team everybody wants to face. I don't think I've ever heard that expression before. Dead cat bounce. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I know, and also the fact you know, this was a good draw for them, wasn't it? Of course. The PSV for yeah. the, the Dutch league, which is not a particularly strong league. Sure. So, I mean, it was a good draw for them. Took any evenly matched sides, I, I suppose you would say. But yeah, it's keeping. I don't know if it's keeping them in a job. But it's certainly keeping this season somewhat alive for them. It is quite a contrast. Mm. You know, you yeah. look at their Champions League form to compare domestically where they've just been there. And the, Gab just alluded to this so-called leaders of this group or guys that are running the locker room, whatever the case may be, that have lost some faith on N. Tursic. That has been the report going around Borussia Dortmund since they lost the title last year. Yeah. At the end of the season. And, and it's been the <laughs> ongoing conversation and it doesn't seem to go away because Borussia Dortmund continue to do the same things. Sometimes they look really good. Sometimes they make you believe. Sometimes you look at them and say, maybe. Yep. And then in the same game, I'm not even talking about a different game. I'm not even talking about this week to next week. No, in the same game, they look like they know absolutely nothing as to how to manage a lead, how to manage a game, how to, how well, to, was how to see a game out. How to, uh, they're, not, they're not able to comfortably see a game out. They never do it. This is not just about today. It's about all year long in Bundesliga. You see this week in and week out. It's a team that you cannot trust. Simple as that. Jaden Sancho, the hero in the hey. Amazing, amazing story, isn't it? I mean, Ten Hag will be sitting there. I mean, he's not got enough problems, is he, Eric Ten Hag? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't know. I think I, I, I think my own opinion in Jaden Sancho is that there's something not quite clicking there in terms of the attitude, the mentality. He's comfortable-ish where he is. It was a good goal. He hasn't always played well in his return to Dortmund, by the way. But obviously he's got himself a goal tonight. Uh, I think his Man United career is, even though he's on loan, uh, I think it's well and truly over. You know, bearing in mind there's probably a new manager coming in. Maybe they'll take him back. I, I, I don't know, but, you know, I don't know what else to say about him. He's a well, bit of a well he got injured today, so he's not going to be yeah, much hoping. of an issue. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we talked about Jaden Sancho when he was making it, and, and it wasn't quite Kelly and Mbappé-esque. I was just like, <laughs> I, was at the, I was at the end of my tether just talking about... Uh, uh, Frank... <laughs> yeah, what do you want from Wait, me? What do you want? <laughs> anything I, would you like to I, add? I, I don't know I, if you saw this game. Yeah, I saw that game, and I, uh, I, I'm totally with uh, with Ali on the on the Borussia Dortmund. You know, when I see the first half and I see Malen making uh, death sufferings that much on the on the side, I say, well, it's going to be a, a tough a tough night for PSV. And they turned everything, you know, and they managed tactically to to play better, and uh, and somebody was helping death. And we didn't see Dortmund any, anymore in the second half. And uh, if Jadon Sancho existed a little bit for the first half and scored that goal, that second goal, uh, since he came back to Dortmund, we didn't see him anymore. And he got injured, so I don't know where he's going to come back. But I was very disappointed. And I'm with the guys, you know, everybody wants to fight against, uh, wants to uh, play against Dortmund because they're so inconsistent. And I really think that's the uh, going to be the easiest way to go to reach a semi-final if you want to play against a... Uh, uh, so-called poor team. Uh, Bruce Dortmund, of course, yeah. from Immingwell, domestically fighting for a place in the Champions League next season. You can follow their fight between now and the end of the campaign, of course, live on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, some of the uh, games of note of Dortmund at home against Eintracht Frankfurt, that's our big game.
on Sunday. Meanwhile, on Saturday, Bayern Munich away against Darmstadt. And also on Sunday, it's the league leaders, Bayer Leverkusen away against Freiburg.